Okay, so we got this wing wall done, and basically it's just a welded rebar frame that's attached to the tire bales with a can wall um, here, here, and here. And then you can see the irregularity of it here. This is actually tire bale here where I took the metal lath and I laid it over it and I screwed it to the tire bales. Of course, there's some gaps behind there. It's okay, this is not a thermal mass wall. It took a long time to build the can wall to weld up the rebar frame. You know, welding and making the rebar frame actually wasn't, wasn't slow, but doing the can wall and stacking the cans, carrying concrete up here and uh, doing it the traditional kind of semi-traditional way at least um, for this wing wall. Now, tire bell, one tire bell here, two tire bells stacked behind this one. So one, two, three tire bells. And so that left some gaps in between the angles of the tire bell. So that's where the can wall went. And then the welded rebar frame went along the top. And um, I'll show you how I did that on the other side. But um, then we basically just spread concrete over it. I sealed the plastic underneath this edge of the concrete, this side of the peak. So this cap here that slopes that way and slopes that way, this half of the slope has plastic under it. And so it held really well. It's held all the plastic underneath it nicely so that when water does come, it'll hit that plastic and it'll all drain off this way. All the moisture will come off this way and won't go onto the tire bells. I'm really trying to protect the tire bells so the wires, so the cables that hold the tire bells don't break. They don't corrode and break. I'm trying to keep them off the dirt and out of the moisture. Okay, just so they'll last much longer. So pretty good, I mean, not great, but not terrible. It came out a little bit better than I expected it. Now on this side, I'm just trying to speed up uh, the process. So I'll stand back here and kind of give you a little bit of a, a view. Of course, this is in shadow from my um, shade thing there. But basically, this is, I'll show you from this side. And this this is not, you know, it's not, okay, so let me just show you how I did it. Uh, my plan was originally to use this hardy backer because I thought it was strong. And then I broke a piece like really, really easily. And I was like, this stuff is not I thought it was much stronger. This I've never really worked with it before. I mean, I've used it in showers and around the tub and stuff like that, but um, it was fairly brittle. I mean, you can even see where I laid it down and then it cracked um, from flexing it a little bit. So that's, it, that's and you people that have worked with this, you're going, well, duh, of course that's what happened. I thought it'd be stronger than that. I thought I'd be able to put one layer up against the tire bales and then uh, put metal lath on, put my concrete form on. Um, I realized quickly that wasn't going to work at all. So I ended up just using this extra OSB. I'm just trying to use stuff I have laying around. Um, Lumber is still pretty expensive. It's coming down, but the OSB is close to normal now. But um, I had this laying around, and uh, so this is close to half-inch OSB. I just made a triangle frame, basically, and um, we screwed it together with braces. We screwed it into the tire bales with six and eight-inch long um, drywall or uh, decking screws. And so... This and then we caked it with this uh, garage floor paint, the whole thing, all all sides, um, and then we put the this over it. I've got a little bit of a gap here. I'm not going to fill that though. I'm not I'm not too worried about that. But structurally, this makes it a little bit stronger. The metal lath isn't going to help it with strength, but the concrete um, plaster on the outside is going to help it with strength. Now, what keeps it tied to the tire bales? That's the question. Um, so we've got several six and eight inch screws where we could hit the tire bells with them because you can't, you know, the tire bells are so irregular. And this is one of the problems with working with tire bells. There's nothing straight about them. Even if you stack them up where you have one edge, you know, most of the edges straight on the tire bells, there's still going to be undulations and, and gaps and things like that, crevices that you're just not going to be able to get a screw in. So if you're working with these, make sure you buy long, long screws, eight inch, 10 inch screws. You'll be happy that you did because when you're trying to screw a flat wall to them, um, if you're trying to do what I'm trying to do here, it's that'll make your life a lot easier. So the other thing I did was, this is rebar right here. I've already painted it black. And this is half inch rebar. I just wired it to this OSB. I don't know if you can see the wires right there. And so I just drilled a hole through the OSB here before this was on and then wrapped a wire around, tied it. So that holds this, holds this in place and holds this in place. And then um, I did that in several places all the way up. Okay. Then I got this, so this is kind of keeping it mostly straight, but it does have a nice curve out here, which is fine. You know, it's tire bells. Earthship construction is not um, square uh, engineering by any means, if you know anything about earthships. So it does have a curve. But then what I did was I took rebar. This is 3 8 rebar that I drilled into the tires here, uh, maybe 8 or 10 inches, this piece right here. 
And so this goes into the tires here. And then I welded this one on here and here, this one on here and here. So it gives it some nice, you know, strong structural support. We did it there as well, drilled rebar down, drilled rebar down to the tires, then welded from there up to here, welded from there up to here. And, you know, it feels, I can't, I can't move it. It's pretty strong. And then on this top tire bale, we did the same thing where we drilled 383 bar down, 383 bar down there, there, as far as I can go. And I just drill it as far as I can go till, till the drill won't turn it anymore. And that's usually at least eight, it's, you know, six to eight inches, if not 10 or 12 inches. If you do hit a pocket, it'll just kind of zip right through it. And then, um, until, and then you'll hit something more firm, but you cannot pull these, you know, there's no way you can physically pull these out. The, the, the rubber that you're drilling it through just grabs it and squeezes the heck out of it. And, uh, and then the little, um, ridges on the rebar also help to grip. So they're, it's super strong. And so that's welded up there. That's welded up there. I used half inch just cause that's what I had left over. And then the frame goes all the way up to there. Okay. Now, as far as the dirt we're piling against here, um, you know, it's the dirt weight's going to be down here. There is going to be some dirt pushing that way, but it's not going to be a lot of dirt. It's only going to be about this high and it's going to go from here up to there. So it's not going to be a ton of dirt pushing that way. I'm not, I'm not too worried about that weight now that I have this tied in up here. What I did worry about was down here where you can't see, these are just screws that we put, um, they're hardy backer screws. They're cement board screws that just go from here into the OS, into the OSB. And so that's what these are. The screws that actually go from the OSB into the tire bales. This is a short one right here. This is like a five incher. So I'm using eight inches, six to eight inches normally. Um, holding the OSB to the tires. Okay, I didn't get to do it in a lot of places because there were a lot of places that, even though the tire bales are right there, that the, the, even the eight inch screws didn't reach the tire bale. So I put a lot of false holes in, had to take a lot of the screws out, but I did contact tire bales. And sometimes you can look around and say, okay, you know, like right there, the tire bale's touching. So I know I can hit it right here and then put that screw in. Okay, so for a third reinforcement that I wanted to do was this right here. What I did was I took my, um, SDS rotary hammer with the biggest bit I have. It looks like it's about an inch. I don't know. It's the biggest one. And then I drilled, and that's probably overkill. I probably didn't need to use one that big, but drilled a hole through the hardy backer here, here, drilled some other holes, drilled four more there. Um, and then I drilled through with a um, three quarter inch bit through the wood. And then I was able to drill these pieces of rebar into the tire bales. So Right here, I have a tire bale between here and here, basically. So that tire bale lines up right about here. So I put a piece there and a piece there. I'm trying to get two rods um, in each tire bale. This tire bale, the edge of it's right here. So I'm trying to put one here and one here. The tire bales are about five feet wide, you know, so this tire bale comes up to about right here, actually, right about to the edge of the wall. And then this, there's a tire bale that's stacked on top of, of course, so I'm doing it here and here as well. Then what we'll do is we'll take some washers, some large washers, put them over this, and then just weld the washer on and then cut it off real close. Uh, we'll weld the washer on right there and then cut it off real close. And then that will, you know, with a couple layers of cement plaster on there, it's not even going to be noticeable. It'll be well hidden. Um, but that'll give it some strength. If dirt does fall back here, it won't push the wall out this way and crack my plaster. I'm hoping this will be enough. So as far as working with tire bales, you know, you can put screws in them and they'll hold pretty dang well. You can put these pieces of rebar in them and they'll hold really, really well. Um, you could also put lag bolts in if you needed to lag bolt something to the tires. Um, if you're just putting it through wood, you can just drill a little hole through the wood so you don't split it and then put a lag bolt through into the tire bales. Um, they drill pretty easy. Let me show you an example here. Okay, so I've got a half inch drill here. I'm using the electric drill um, and then chucked up this length of 3 8 rebar. This is an old piece that I pulled out. I'll try to put a link at the end um, of the video of when we built the bond beam. And I used these to build the bond beam frame. And so I drilled these into the top of the tire bells of the walls, and then we poured the bond beam, and then we put wood around it, and then we poured the bond beam, and then I pulled all these out. I did use these, I did leave a bunch of them in the bond beam that were drilled into the tire bells for extra support. So that bond beam is attached to the tire bells very, very well. And uh, you can watch that video. But um, 
basically I've saved a bunch of them that just held the frame in place and you can see the angle there it's maybe I don't know 60 degrees or so that's a guess but it's not a 45 degree angle it kind of comes to a point and this works really well for drilling into the tire bales so I'm gonna see how far I can get this one drilled in it looks like it's about 18 inches long plus what's in the chuck so we'll see how far we can get it in Okay, so these washers I got are pretty thin. So I got two. It'll give it a little more strength. Okay, so I can hear some of you guys saying, Eric, I don't have welding skills. I'm not a welder. I'd have to hire somebody to do this kind of thing. And, um, I would say that for some of this stuff that I'm welding, it's not structural welding. It's not welding something over somebody's head that people are going to walk. It's not commercial welding. Um, this is just extra stuff to hold this wall in place. Okay, so that's all, that's all I'm doing here. I'm not. Uh, this isn't primary welding. That's the only thing that's holding the structure together, obviously. Um, but you know, I started welding because somebody was my father-in-law was kind enough to show me how to use a stick welder. And then his brother later taught me how to use a MIG welder, a flux core welder. So then I went on to MIG welding after that. And that I just love, but that's kind of a pain to drag out here. So um, I bought a little $200 Lincoln flux core welder. My One of my buddies has been using it for about a year. He's never welded before, but he bought this welder and he's been welding on his pipe fence and some couple different things. And he's had pretty good success with it. And so I bought this same welder. It's still in the box. I'm going to make a video of unboxing it, how it all goes together. So you homesteaders out there, they're like, man, I could, once you start welding things and making things like little gates and things like that, and um, reinforcing your fence posts, reinforcing just all kinds, it's just, you can do tons of stuff with it. Once you start doing it, it just opens up this whole field that you didn't even know you could do. It's like getting a, a an air compressor if you've never had an air compressor before. And, and all of a sudden you realize, oh, I can use it for blowing out filters. I can use it for, you know, blowing out the car. And that's just the air blower. I can use it for the air tools. I can use it for saws. I can use it for pneumatic wrenches. I can use it for, there's tons of things you can use air compressor for now. Um, vacuum pumps. I mean, it just goes on and on. So once you buy a compressor and you realize, oh, there's all these things, welding's the same way. So if you're thinking about getting into it or you're homesteading and you're making everything out of wood, there's some things that you can make better out of steel um, or make stronger out of steel, I should say. Maybe it will last longer. Um, and uh, so just keep keep this. Don't, don't write it off as I don't have these skills or I can't do it because you can. I'm going to show you how in this upcoming video. So subscribe and uh, look for this video because hopefully I'll get it done in the next couple months. I'll be starting with a basic welder and we'll go through some basic things that you can like practice in your garage. It runs on 120 so you can run a big power cord, you know, like a 10 gauge or 12 gauge power cord out to your work site or just use a generator like I'm using. This is a 3500 watt generator. My buddy actually used his uh, little $200 Lincoln welder on this generator um, for some of his projects. So it does work well and it runs that little welder fine. So it's not going to run at the top uh, the top settings, you know, you're not going to be burning quarter inch steel with it on one pass by any means because the generator is just not that big, but you can still weld some stuff. We're going to, I'm going to show you how we're going to weld these little pieces right here. So we're just going to smash them up here and then run a bead of this flux core wire around here, just enough to hold that in place. And, uh, 
So all I'm saying is don't write this skill off if you don't have this skill. It's it's just like any skill. You know, you didn't start out woodworking, running the table saw, and uh, making cabinets the first day, did you? So, you know, the same thing with wood skills. You didn't start off framing your house by framing a house. I mean, you didn't start off with your woodwork skills by framing a house. So um, you start off small and you work your way up. And so that's what, welding is the same thing. So let's get started. Let me show you how this is going to work. Okay, so you can see here, you know, not, it doesn't need to be perfect. And, and honestly, it's going to take tons and tons of strength to rip this washer off this this way. So um, I didn't weld it all the way around and I don't need to. I've got it on kind of both sides so the washer might flex a little bit, worst case scenario, but it's not going to get ripped off there by any means. Now, so when you're welding something like this, this is thicker steel, this is thinner steel, right? The washer's thinner. So if you spend time with heat on that, it's just going to melt through it. This is not going to melt through as easy. Even at that light setting, it'll still melt through this thick stuff, right? Because it's a welder. So it's welding, it's melting that metal while it's adding wire, while it's adding filler metal. Because if you just try to melt wire with a torch or melt metal with a torch, it's just going to melt away and puddle away and flow away. So the purpose of the MIG or the flux core or any welding process is to add wire, add metal to the puddle to replace what's trying to flow away and to build up a weld. And so that's what makes it strong and adds metal to it. So all welding processes, I should say, shouldn't say all, but all that I am familiar with add metal to the uh, weld area. Um, so you would start here on this thick metal right here on the rebar and build your puddle and then drag that into the thin, spend less time there on the, the thin and pull it away. And so that's what I was trying to do. Hit the rebar weld, make it thick. Um, and you can even see where it kind of uh, scored the rebar right there. It kind of melted it away right there. And then I drug it down here just for a few seconds. Um, not for a few seconds, but just for a much briefer time, spent a much briefer time here on this thinner metal and then pulled it away. Just enough to melt it. And this just takes practice. It kind of gets a feel once you start watching what you're doing um, and understanding what you're doing. It just takes practice and watch videos on YouTube. Watch these experts on YouTube. Um, I could name some, but there's a, there's a bunch of them that are whatever process welder you buy that's the people you watch and you'll pick up all kinds of cool tips from them and uh so let's get these cut off and see what they look like okay got them ground down Just get some paint on them. It's pretty flat. Ideally, it would have been better to put these, you know, in and then put the metal lath over it. But I'd already started putting metal lath up before I decided, you know what, I need to reinforce this a little bit more. So now I feel pretty good about this. This is not a traditional wing wall that has stacked tire bales or stacked tires. You know, rammed earth tires, which would be solid and would last forever, and that wing wall is going to stay there for 150 years or whatever. But um, I'm not too keen on pounding tires, um, especially when I use tire bells to build this, and it went up the tire bell, the wall structure went up in a you know basically a day's worth of work with a tractor and a forklift and forks on the tractor rather. So, and that was working by myself. So these three tire bells here, this one, the one below it, and then this one out here, that's going to be support of the wing of the wing wall here. Um, that's primarily, I didn't want to build a wall like this and then put all dirt against it because I knew eventually it would just bust everything out. So this is going to take the brunt of the weight of the dirt, the downward force. So now we're just going to have dirt kind of pushed up in that corner and that corner and along this edge and then right here. And then hopefully we'll get it covered in this before winter this year 
and uh, hopefully this greenhouse will work even better. You know, obviously it never froze last year, and uh, so that's pretty amazing. There's kale there, there's Swiss chard, tomatoes on the other side. She's got a bunch of different stuff growing there, cucumbers. Uh, we had the best cucumber salad and tomato salad. We had spinach, um, kale, Swiss chard, and salmon salad last night. So obviously the salmon didn't grow in there, but everything else did. So that was kind of nice. Oh, except the onion. So, and that's in the middle of the summer. In the winter, the greens grow in there really, really well, and they'll grow all year, all year round, even in the super harsh cold climate. So, and I ran out of washers. So, and if you've watched my videos in the past, you've seen me do this before, where I just took this plumber's tape and uh, cut the big hole, cut a slot at the big hole, or cut it right at the big hole and left the little hole in the middle, and that made a washer that's perfect size for these uh, little screws that go on the cement board, or pretty much any drywall screw. Again, working on this west side wing wall, and like I said in the previous shots, I'm doing this differently. Um, We've got the OSB on, we've got the cement board on. It's all screwed together. It's all screwed to the tire bales. We've got um, rebar anchors into the tire bales, several inches, each one, one, two, three, four, five, six. Those washers are welded on. They're gonna help keep the wall from coming this way as well. So that gives it extra support. Also, what are you doing, girl? Okay. Go get him. Hurry, go get him. So, <laughs> I what I wanted to do was match the cap on the other side. I wanted to make it, you know, like six inch wide cap and bring it up and, and down so it matched the other side perfectly. But I realized I was gonna have to build this whole structure back here to support that concrete over here on this back side. And I just, I'm not going to take the time to do that. I could do it. I was trying to figure out how to do it with rebar. I could put weld re pieces of rebar in and then weld a rebar post along, put metal lath over it, and that would make an easy cap. And I'm just like, that's just way too much. It's not going to match exactly. Um, and I'm okay with that. So what I did was this plastic, let me start over here. This is a hundred foot roll of 20 foot wide, six mil plastic. So let me get out of the sun. I've tucked it up underneath this um, metal here, okay? I've tucked it up underneath there. I've used those boards with a few screws in them just to hold it in place. I've taken the plastic and folded it over the OSB and the cement board wall, okay? And I'll get to that in a minute. But what I want to point out here is a mistake I've made many times in the past, don't make this mistake, is I've just kind of laid the plastic over there, and then I started pouring dirt down here, and then pour dirt here, and then pour dirt here, and that totally screws it up up here. Because what happens is when you pour dirt down here, it pulls the plastic down. Even if you have it tucked and all perfect, um, and you think you got all the, when you put the weight of the dirt on it, it starts pulling on the plastic, and then it pulls this plastic up here tighter. And so even if you have it tucked in here, it's going to pull that straight out, and then that's even worse up here. So and then you pour dirt here, and then it makes it even worse up here. So I'm going to start pouring dirt on the top here. What I did was I I used a whole lot of extra plastic. I tucked it all around those pieces of re support rebar that come down and are anchored into the tire bales. I've tucked it all in there, stuffed it all down inside, all around the tire bales, pulled it up over the rebar, stuffed it down around the tire bale on that side, pulled it up over that piece of rebar. It was a little bit of work. It took about 20 minutes to do all this. Not a big deal, but you can see these pockets here. So when I go to dump dirt now, those pockets are already have the plastic tucked in them. I have a whole lot of extra plastic up here so that as I'm pouring dirt here and it tries to pull this plastic down this way, um, I'll have some spare plastic and it will be try putting so much tension on it that it's going to rip it out or rip the plastic. Does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so I'm going to start pouring up here with a tractor. I'm just going to scoop it up with a bucket, dump it up here first. Then I'll make sure that this is okay and dump it down here because I can fix this. I can pull up more plastic from the bottom. And I guess if I have a whole bunch of plastic up there on the top and I didn't anchor it, I could do that as well. If I left a whole bunch of plastic up here, I could pour it at the bottom and then work my way up and then have that extra plastic to work my way down. But I've just decided this is going to be easier. I'm going to pour it up here. And then if I need, if, if this plastic needs extra space here, if I need extra plastic here, I'll just pull it up from the bottom to fill the holes. I'll pour this one and then I'll pour this lower part here. 
pour dirt on this lower part, what I mean. And then I'll go ahead and cut my plastic away. And uh, this will give me good coverage. Um, sorry about the sun. This will give me good coverage. I'm going to try to bring this plastic all the way out here. And uh, then I'll have to fill in this hole with dirt here. <clears throat> and this will give me good foundational coverage. Although I'm personally not worried about the foundation at all because these tire barrels are 5x5, five five, basically. You know, they're huge. And um, they're sitting on super compacted soil that's been here for years. We've been driving trucks over for decades, literally. Um, the propane truck, the septic truck, my pickup... Um, we had semis come back here and turn around many, many times. We've had deliveries of gravel and all kinds of other stuff. And uh, it's super compacted. But I still want to protect it as much as possible. So that's why I'm draping all this plastic over here. Okay. Now, as far as this goes right here, <clears throat> the idea of taking the plastic and bringing it over the top of the wall, okay, just two or three inches or so. And then I'm taking the metal lath and I'm folding it back over the top of the plastic. And then we've anchored the metal lath on the back side as well with these little screws and little fake washers, right? Okay, so that's going to keep the plastic trapped. It'll give me something to roll the cement over, my cement cap. It'll kind of roll over this way. It'll attach here. Of course, it's not going to attach back here on the plastic, but it'll attach well to the metal lath here. And I'll be able to have a little bit of a cap. I'll bring my dirt right up here to the edge. Um, and let's just look at it down this way. So you can kind of see what it looks like. <clears throat> from the front, it won't be super noticeable. Uh, from the side, you know, the plastic may get exposed here and there. I'll just have to keep covering it with dirt just to make sure it stays covered. Because the dirt will settle. It will wash away with the rain once in a while. So this is just going to take a little bit of maintenance, but uh, shouldn't be too big of a deal. Okay. I'm trying to match the other side as far as the height here goes, where the cement is going to come off, the cement plaster. And then it'll go down the swing wall, of course. Okay, so this plastic overhanging the cement board here is going to protect my OSB in the back. Um, it's going to be protected from the top here. The plastic is, so this OSB back here isn't going to get any moisture. The only place it's going to get moisture is from the ground here, which it can get a lot of moisture and start rotting out down here. And so that's why we painted it. And... Um, that's something I just, I don't know how to take care of, except maybe wrap plastic around it somehow and try to seal the back, but I didn't do that part. My dirt, of course, is going to come out right here and go down to the ground out here somewhere. And then the rest of this will be all visible cement plaster. Okay, so this is not a 150-year wall by any means, but it'll last. You know, it'll last. This is a pretty dry climate we live in. We only get about 8 inches of rain, 8 inches of uh, moisture a year, so... Um, but the moisture in the soil can uh, can cause serious problems. So keep that in mind if you're building something. Uh, wood in direct contact with dirt out here that's dry almost all the time is not is going to last a long time. But underneath the ground where a moisture level always stays, that can be problematic. That's why I really wanted to just use cement board um, for the whole thing. But I ended up using OSB. Okay, good. Um... I'm going to get the dirt dumped on the plastic and then we'll get some, start getting some cement on this. Okay, got the wing walls done. Got them stained. We also got a coat of Thompson's water seal, which I didn't know they made it for concrete, but they do. So that's on there as well, a real heavy coat of that. And she used kind of a brown and then splashed some red in there, so it looks kind of cool. So, a little bit of a wonkiness here, but that's how I built it into it, so it would tie tight to that tire bell right there. Um, just because the tire bells are crooked, as you know. Uh, if you watch any of my other stuff on tire bells. Now up here, I've got to start building dirt up and get this uh, closed up before winter. It's almost October, so it's already freezing at night. And you've got a big plastic layer laid out all the way down to the ground. This comes out all the way down to this ramp. So it's tucked in and screwed in underneath the metal right there, way up inside there. And then it comes out so that'll divert any water coming out away from the foundation. Not that that's probably necessary, but um, it's the tanks are definitely buried. They should be good for winter. You can see one of the top of the tank um, inlets right there. That solar fan is doing its job. It's pulling air into there. 
pulling cool air through that cooling tube and now part of the problem is the sun's heating this and then it's cooling it so it's not as cool as it can be once we get this all buried but uh, once that's all buried it'll be much cooler um, just got to get this covered got to get it built up to the metal there on this side and get this covered so the dirt you know up there will slope out down here I wish in hindsight I had made the wing walls a little bit shallower angle so that the wing wall came down like this further out because just the way the dirt piles up and the way it kind of rolls off and you can only stack it so, so steep and uh, so I wish I made them a little bit longer but that's okay the finish is very different as you can see this is very rough in texture this is all hand done of course that's hand done on that other wall that looks nice and smooth but uh, still a little bit of finish up work we got to do but um, it looks pretty good so right now I'm going to dig dirt so we can get this buried and I need a big dirt pile so we can get uh, all this dirt replaced here and dirt piled all the way around I want it fully buried before winter um, so we can get the maximum effectiveness of the when the sun shines in and heats all that thermal mass in there that it's not leaking out up here uh, above the dirt level so good let's go dig some dirt <laughs> 